there's been a lot of buzz about Starlink lately. What is Starlink? In its very basic form, all SpaceX Starlink is, is an internet service provider. Think about things like Comcast, CenturyLink, Charter, Mediacom, Viasat, HughesNet. Those are internet service providers to get internet at your home. In its basic Here, form, that's all Starlink is. And let's off. Starlink is an internet company founded by Elon Musk and is part of SpaceX's plan to provide internet for the entire world. It'll comprise of tens of thousands of satellites overhead in low Earth orbit, providing internet again for the entire world. Goodness, holy cow, huge line. Wow! These small satellites ride on SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets, about 60 per launch, each launch happening about every two weeks based on the last couple of months here. As of late winter 2021, beta service has now been available, so you can sign up at Starlink.com. So Starlink is not going to be like the end-all budget-friendly internet service provider. That's not what Starlink is. It's what a lot of people want to think Starlink is. In the beta, it's $100 a month for service, plus you have to pay $500 for the equipment here in the United States. That's a big chunk of change. It's not boasting to be a budget-friendly internet service provider. It's supposed to be a good internet service provider, and that's what you're paying for. So it is not for that. Starlink is also not really targeted for city goers. Typically in cities or urban areas, you have several good internet service providers that can get you good quality internet for a rather affordable price as well. If you have a fiber internet connection, there's literally no reason to get Starlink as long as you have at least good service with that fiber internet. So Starlink is for people who are lacking good internet, especially in rural areas. And again, that is where Starlink will really excel rural and remote that is who starlink is really really going to be targeted for it can also be for people who need internet that if you're at home it doesn't work really well if you have really bad internet my service provider it likes to drop randomly a few times a day that's a problem when you're trying to do very sensitive work so this may give a competitor to an area where there is no competition for example, where I'm at now, I have Medicom. I have a fiber internet connection that's not even a true fiber internet connection. I may get 100 down, but I get 15 up. Incredibly slow upload speeds. That's an area where Starlink may actually help me out. Latency is something that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to getting internet. Latency is the time it takes for you to do something for it to be registered on the website's end. For example, how long it'll take for you to Get a web page, as an example. Or if you're gaming, and this is a big one, if you're trying to game on satellite internet, latency is the time it takes for you to say left click on somebody's head for that shot to register. <laughs> latency can be incredibly slow in rural America with DSL internet or if you're stuck on satellite internet. And thank you, Sarah, for that. Viasat links to a video where it boasts about a latency of 600 milliseconds. That's about half a second. That's more than half a second. Imagine if you're trying to, say, play a video game. If you're trying to do something, but there's a delay of half a second, that is an eternity. That makes it impossible. Think about if you're trying to do a video chat with a friend or school or something like that. Half a second delay when trying to do a conversation can be quite cumbersome to work around. Starlink can fix that. Good latency is sub 70 milliseconds. You're aiming for latency less than 50 milliseconds, especially for things like gaming. If you can get below 50, you are sitting pretty good. SpaceX claims that they can get their latency down to 20 to 40 milliseconds, which is pretty darn good, especially for satellite internet. The reason why satellite internet has such an issue with latency is because typically satellites for things like Viasat are in what's called geostationary orbit. As the Earth rotates, a satellite is following 
and facing the Earth in that same exact spot. So they're essentially rotating at the exact same speed. To get to that point, that satellite is out there 22,236 miles. Starlink will be a mere 341 miles overhead, 65 times closer. And that is a big help when you're trying to do something. Because remember, if you're using satellite internet, you're sending something to a satellite that comes back down to Earth, does its thing on Earth, goes back up to the satellite, comes back down to you. The less distance you can make that, the better. And Starlink is in low Earth orbit compared to geostationary orbit. And that is a big help for Starlink. Starlink also claims to have download speeds of 50 to 150 megabits per second. That is some very good quality speed, especially, again, in rural America, where maybe you only have DSL as an internet service provider. Or if you're stuck with satellite, in my case, areas I've looked around here, Viasat, the max I can get is 30 megabits per second. The low end possibility of Starlink is technically faster than what I'm guaranteed with Viasat. That is a big, big help. Starlink also claims it doesn't have any data caps, so you can download as you want, as much as you want, without having to deal with any data caps or extra charges. And again, upload speeds, while also not really promised anything on the Starlink page, everything that I've seen around the internet boasts upload speeds somewhat close to the download speeds, maybe a little bit less, somewhere in that 20 to 30 megabits per second range, which technically is even better than what I have on my fiber internet here in eastern Iowa. So wrapping up this video as best that I can. Starlink is most important for people who live in rural America or very rural outpost areas. That's where you can get an internet service where there might not be anything, let alone a good quality internet service. If you live in a rural America where rural broadband doesn't exist, Starlink is a fantastic option and I do think will be a game changer for our millions of Americans here in the United States. Upload speeds and download speeds are good. Latency claims to be good. That's a huge, huge plus. Again, especially in rural America where you may have relied on satellite for internet, but you've had to deal with really poor latency. This is a big, big thing for you. And in cities, it can offer competition. That's a big thing. Now you are kind of limited in cities. They claim that you cannot have as many customers per cell or service area on earth. Therefore, in cities, it may get a lot more congested where you might be limited on how many people can actually get Starlink. But in rural areas, that probably shouldn't be an issue. And finally, one other great thing with Starlink is that it limits the need and dependency on Earth-based infrastructure. Now, you might think about that being, that doesn't sound that important. Well, I'll give you a recent example here in eastern Iowa. We had a powerful storm called the derecho on August 10th, 2020. It knocked out power for 14 days, internet for upwards of two months where I live. If I had Starlink, I'd be able to have internet if I was able to plug my Starlink thing into a generator or even to my car inverter. That would allow me to get back online. Not only will Starlink be a big game changer for just normal internet at home, I think this could be a huge thing for backup, for businesses, companies, the media who has to report out in these areas of disaster where internet and service might be down. This can be significant, and I mean significant in a number of ways, and I cannot be more excited for what Starlink may be able to bring. Now, speaking of that, I have Starlink on the way. In about two to four weeks from posting this video, I should have Starlink, and we're gonna do a ton of videos here on this channel with Starlink. Testing upload speeds, download speeds, trying to game with it, video chat with it, doing all of the things I can possibly think of with Starlink. We're gonna run it through its course, as you should, with a beta program. So make sure to subscribe for more content there, and make sure to like this video if you did find it informative. I tried to encompass a lot of different topics here in just a few minutes, so hopefully you now know what Starlink is and why it's so important.